Ashton Simmons, better known as Daniel Caesar, quickly rose to fame with his 2017 platinum hit, Get You. Described as a fusion of Frank Ocean and Miguel, his soulful R&B resonated with music lovers, and he acquired millions of fans, including celebrities like Erica Badu, Michelle Obama, and Stevie Wonder. He also worked with several artists, such as her, Brandy. I didn't even really knew if he knew me or not. Right. So he uh -oh. did, and he really just he just allowed me to just be myself and yeah. welcomed me like I was I was family. And T Pain. But his goal was to transition into the business world like Jay-Z. Unfortunately for Daniel, after becoming a platinum-selling, Grammy Award-winning artist, he made several missteps that severely impacted his career. Are there black people in this, in this chat right now? I can't tell. Why are we being so mean to white people right now? That's a serious question. Here's a look at his grand opening grand closing, and how he's moving forward following the backlash. Before we get started, don't forget to grab something to eat at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of barbecue beef jerky, cinnamon toast crunch popcorn, and strawberry licorice. Daniel was raised Seventh-day Adventist and attended a private Christian high school on the campus of his church in Oshawa, a suburb outside of Toronto. According to the Fader, his family was one of the handful of black families that lived in the community. After his parents found out he sold substances to a classmate, they alerted the school, and Daniel got expelled. He was homeschooled for a while, but during his senior year, he got into an argument with his parents one week before graduation. 17-year-old Daniel was kicked out of his parents' home and spent the summer at a friend's house in the suburbs. He eventually moved to Toronto in hopes of kickstarting his music career, but it wasn't an easy journey. His father, who's an accomplished gospel singer, had bad experiences and didn't want his children to be involved in the industry. But Daniel continued working toward his dream, all while being homeless and sleeping on park benches and on friends' couches. After releasing his 2014 EP, Praise Break, things turned around for him, and he was able to get a basement in Kensington Market. In 2015, he released his second EP, entitled Pilgrim's Paradise. The following year, Get You featuring Kali Uchis was released. It went platinum in the U.S. and Canada and caught the industry's attention. He told the Seattle Times that he met with major record labels to see their vision, but none of the labels were offering him anything outside of what he and his team could do for him. So he decided to go independent and co-founded Golden Child Recordings. He told Vice he was proud to be able to go back home and tell his dad, I still have all my masters and all my publishing. I'm good. No one is taking advantage of your son. In August 2017, his highly anticipated debut album, Freudian, was released. In an interview with Vice, he described the album as an introspective project about relationships. It peaked at number 25 and stayed on the Billboard charts for 98 weeks. Apple Music featured him in their Up Next Artist category. The album was certified platinum and he won a Juno Award and received two Grammy nominations. He headed out on a world tour and performed at the 2018 Coachella Festival. Following his performance, he came under fire for his Twitter likes and comments that showed his perceived support of Kanye West and right-wing advocate Candace Owens. The tweets implied that the left is solely responsible for mind control tactics and the oppression of black people. When he was called out for his social media activity, he tweeted that listening to the arguments of the opposition can lead to a clearer understanding. He also posted a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. before deleting his tweets. Some may argue that it shouldn't matter what a Canadian thinks about American politics, but online users still let him have it. 
In the midst of the backlash, he released a statement via his Apple Notes app in which he apologized to those he offended. He acknowledged that as a Canadian black man who grew up in a predominantly white area, his views on race relations were different. However, he still believed that communication and understanding can dismantle hatred. By this point, Daniel's fan base was so loyal that they were willing to disregard his tweets and move past the situation. In February 2019, he won a Grammy for Best R&B Performance for the song Best Part featuring her. The following month, he appeared on John Mayer's Instagram live show called Current Mood, and Dave Chappelle was a special guest. While introducing Daniel, Dave had this to say. You just met Daniel Caesar for the first time. You heard him sing a little bit. Yeah, very gay. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Was that, did I say that out loud? Uh -oh. I'm just kidding. Dang. You want to set up and we'll uh, we'll do this. We'll do the tune. You're not feeling it. Not yet. No, Daniel. Not yet. What I said? Yeah. Yeah. Did I offend you? Yeah. I'm being hella sensitive. Okay, this is, I am a very big fan of you, you know what I'm saying? Well, now I feel bad. People were on Daniel's side and were completely outraged by Dave's comments. But weeks later, any sympathy Daniel received was thrown out the window. Daniel's friend, white party promoter, Yes Jules, was getting dragged all over the internet after she appeared on the Easily Offended podcast and spoke about the time she posted a picture of an offensive shirt and asked her followers if she was allowed to wear it. She went on to rant about black women who tried to explain to her that her actions exploit black culture for her own gain. Jules has a long history of having an antagonistic relationship with black women and attributing it to their jealousy over her popularity with black men. Adding to the backlash was a January 2019 Instagram video of Jules performing a rap for Soulja Boy with lyrics that made generalizations. Because my is fat and my skin ain't black, I'm the vulture that's a Ooh. Yeah, they never do nothing, they never give back, they keep killing blacks. Apparently, Daniel didn't like the way Jules was being treated by online users, so he hopped on Instagram Live to rant about the shortcomings of his black audience, including his perception that black people are constantly playing the victim. Why is it that we're allowed to be disrespectful and rude to everybody else? And when anybody returns any type of energy to us, that's not that's not a quality. Saying, white people have been mean to us in the past. I have a like, what are you going to do about that? Tell me what you're going to do about that. There's no there's no answer other than gaining understanding and keeping it moving. You have to bridge the gap and you can cancel me. I'm gonna put I'm yo, I'm making music right now. I'll put it out. You guys don't have to listen to it. Cancel me. Make me broke. Not only did people promise to cancel him, online users went for the jugular and attacked him for his thought process and his appearance. Amid all the chaos, social activist DeRay McKesson tweeted that he had reached out to Daniel and spoke with him for a few hours. DeRay wrote that Daniel was learning and growing but still had a lot of work to do. A week later, Daniel was back on Instagram Live, but he didn't apologize for his statements. He was only sorry for the way he delivered his message. He also said he was happy that everything went down the way it did because he felt like he was, quote, coming full circle. Three months later, his sophomore album, Case Study 01, was released, and it only sold 39,000 copies in the first week. It peaked at number 17 on the Billboard 200 and stayed on the chart for three weeks before it poofed and disappeared. The single Cyanide went gold, but overall, despite having veteran artists like Pharrell and John Mayer on the project, the album was a flop. In their album review, the Daily Californian website wrote, It seems he lost his stride as quickly as he found it. It appeared that everyone had taken Daniel's advice and didn't bother to purchase or stream his music, and his troubling comments made it hard for many people in the black community to support him. A writer for The Gateway Online said it bluntly, What Daniel Caesar needs to do is take a seat and reflect on why he is following Kanye West's playbook. Then he needs to burn that book and educate himself on the realities of racial dynamics so I can re-download his album. 
Daniel spent the remainder of 2019 on tour and took some time to rethink his online presence. During a February 2020 interview with the CBC, he was asked to address the backlash he received from his Instagram live session. Daniel responded, There's so much I want to say, but there are cameras on, and it can literally bring me back to a place that's not worth it. Since then, Daniel has archived most of his posts on Instagram and is staying focused on his career. He was featured on Justin Bieber's mega smash hit, Peaches, and has teamed up with FKA Twigs and Omar Apollo. He signed a worldwide publishing deal with Warner Chapel Music and was named the Chief Culture Officer for the Annex in Toronto. He has finally decided to work with a major label and signed with Republic Records in April 2022. As of this video, he's working on his third studio album and has a new single on the way called Please Don't Lean. He has also made a complete transformation. He has changed the way he dresses, the way he thinks, and his musical style. He explained to Billboard his new album will be less R&B and more folk and country. Daniel performed at this year's Coachella and was joined on stage by Justin Bieber to perform their song, Peaches. His appearance at the outdoor festival proves that although many of his day one fans no longer support him, the industry still has his back. For now. Let us know if you're surprised by what happened to Daniel Caesar. And thanks for watching RRG.